Okay, so this clip is looking at how we reduce carbonyl compounds using the hydride ion, or H-. Um, it's a new mechanism for A2 called nucleophilic addition. And uh, it's important before we do so, have a look at it, um, to just remind ourselves what a carbonyl compound actually is. So the carbonyl group, the C double O bond in other words, uh, it must be allowed to remain polar. So if you've got your dipole like this, delta plus and delta minus, obviously the carbon is going to be bonded to two other things. So, for example, you could have an aldehyde, where R stands for a carbon-based change, for example, so it could be an ethyl group, propyl group, butyl group, whatever. That is a carbonyl compound because you have the polarity maintained. If you have a ketone, so you'd still have your C double bond O, but maybe you might have two carbon chains coming off either side of your carbon. Again, that would maintain its polarity because there's no other electronegative atoms nearby. However, if you have a carboxylic acid, this time you've got a carbon double bond oxygen and then you've got another oxygen bonded to the same carbon. So you've got a slight problem here because you've got the polarity of the carbon double bond oxygen but you've also got the polarity of the carbon single bond oxygen. So what that means is you get a slight delocalization of electrons that moves the double bond above or below. So this cannot be considered a carbonyl compound in the same way that the ketones and the aldehydes can. Let's look at an example of something that you perhaps haven't come across before. It doesn't really come up very much in um, A-level chemistry, to be quite honest. It's called an amide. So an amide is C double bond O with an NH2 group on it. So this is not a carbonyl compound because you've got delta negative on the nitrogen as well as on the oxygen. So it's important to remember what a carbonyl compound actually is before we start talking about how they're reduced. So let's now start looking at the reduction, the actual mechanism of carbonyl compounds, in other words aldehydes and ketones, what we're going to be looking at. So what I'm going to do is as I draw this, I'll pause and annotate each important part of it so you know exactly what's going on at each stage. So we'll start with the most simple carbonyl compound, methanol, to keep it nice and straightforward. So not forgetting our dipoles, because that's really important. So if we start off with H minus, H minus is our nucleophile. So H minus provides a lone pair of electrons and they move towards the delta positive carbon of the carbonyl group. So this now means that the pi bond in the carbonyl group can break. And that happens by an electron pair moving onto the delta negative oxygen. Remembering that oxygen is electronegative, more so than carbon, so it tends to withdraw electron density towards itself. So I'll just put a little bit of background at the bottom to help explain where the H- comes from and also what we're about to um, see in the next part of the mechanism. So you can see at the bottom that I've uh, put in that the H2O, that the NaBH4 or sodium borohydride is dissolved in, now actually gets involved in the mechanism. 
So let's have a look at that bit. So we now have our carbon with the two hydrogens that it came with originally plus the extra hydrogen that the hydride used to be. So that now means that it's a carbon single bond oxygen because as you can see from the top left of the screen when the pi bond broke two electrons moved from the pi bond onto the oxygen so that now means that the oxygen has an additional lone pair so it's negatively charged. At the same time you've got the water that the sodium borohydride was dissolved in as referred to at the bottom of the page. Now not forgetting from last year that water is a polar molecule so if we put the dipoles in you can see quite clearly and also the lone pairs that you'll no doubt remember using last year as well that what can happen is that uh, the slightly positive hydrogens can potentially attract a lone pair from somewhere. So what happens now is the lone pair on the oxygen gets attracted to one of the protons in the water, or one of the hydrogens, I should say, in the water. So that now means that the equivalent hydrogen-oxygen bond can break, and that pair of electrons can move on to the oxygen, like so. So this now gives us the final part of the mechanism coming up. So finally what we end up with is our organic product, which is methanol. So the carbon maintains the three bonds with three hydrogens, just like in the second step, except now you've got an OH group because the oxygen, as you recall, creates a data covalent bond with one of the hydrogens in the water. And you've also got an OH minus ion. So let's summarize what's happened here, what the reaction is. So it's worth remembering that although it's an additional reaction, which means it technically is 100% atom economy, if you take into account the fact that a hydroxide ion is produced, then there's also another product. So in other words, the hydroxide ion is a byproduct of the reaction involving the water in which the NaBH4 has been dissolved. But technically, in organic terms, the, um, the reaction is an addition reaction, as you can see from three versions on the bottom left of the screen.